everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener here. Thanks for joining me for this episode. So you can see by the title, The Best Place to Garden, Houston, Texas, it should also say, This Time of Year. Now you have to tune into the video to find out why. You see, I grew up in Pennsylvania outside of Philadelphia, and everybody that I knew that gardened there, and at the time, remember, I didn't garden as a child. Actually, I didn't garden up until four or five years ago. But when I knew people that had gardens, everybody kind of rushed into spring and summer. And that was their big time of year to grow things like tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and all the things you traditionally grow in spring and summer in the northern, mid-northern part of the United States and parts like that around the world. You see, how you can tell someone's a new gardener that's not from Texas is when they try to grow tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that that we all enjoy in July. Let me give you a hint. You won't do that great of a job. And the reason why is that it's so darn hot that time of year. We get so much rain. And many times, things like tomatoes, the flowers, because of the heat, will not pollinate. Or the cucumbers, because of the heat, will, uh, flowers will not pollinate. So we actually get two summers here with summer-type crops in spring and in fall. Now in South Texas, especially in Houston, Texas, um, folks really usually take advantage of the spring and summer. And you can tell that by the Home Depots and the Lowe's and the garden centers of the world because they put out all the tomatoes, they put out the peppers, they put out the cucumbers and the other traditionally summer type crops in most of the United States. But what you don't realize is really the best time of year to grow those great things that we love like tomatoes is actually in the fall. And I'm going to show you what I'm growing this fall. Now to do that, and if you're living in Texas or you're living in Florida or potentially New Orleans or Mississippi or any other part of the year that's in zone 8B or higher, okay, 8B, 9 or 10, you realize that it's what mid-November right now it's currently 82 degrees in the day, 80 degrees. At night it gets down to 60, 62, maybe 50, 55, okay? But it doesn't get to freezing, which is most of the United States. So because of that, it's a great time of year to grow. So what I am doing right now is I'm growing three crops, which I'm going to share with you, that most people watching this video are probably envious or jealous because you cannot do that that time of year wherever you are in the world. And to do this, let me share a tip. So if you live in those parts that I talked about, Florida, Texas, any part in the south, you need to start your seeds, okay, in August. And then you take six to eight to nine weeks to transplant them. And then in October, November, you're enjoying the fine vegetables. So I'm going to show you a little bit of tour of my garden. And here's just a sampling of the cherry tomatoes that I have. Look at that. Man, beautiful, okay. Uh, this is just a fraction of what I got this time of year. Anybody who lives in Texas, especially Houston, you can do this, okay? And I want to tell you what. I had a, uh, one of my, my daughter's friends over here the other day, and I said, Do you like tomatoes? And she said, I really don't, uh, Mr. Bernhard. Uh, so I said to her, uh, try this. This is not a tomato. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, homegrown tomato, organic. See if you like it. Like me? She put it in her mouth and she said, wow, I've never tasted anything like it. It reminds me of a grape, like the sweetness and so forth. So when you look at things like these homegrown tomatoes, look how brilliant they are. Look how, I mean, just un unbelievable color. You can get that in the fall if you live in the south. Again, you got to start your seeds in August and you can be enjoying. Now, I'm going to keep growing because I probably have until mid-December to do that. Another crop that I grow down here in Houston, Texas, as you know, is pickling cucumbers, okay? Look how beautiful those things are, okay? I picked all these this week, and I'll show you more of my pickling cucumbers. So, uh, this time of year, if you live in Texas, you've got to be growing. I apologize for the wind. Another reason why South Texas or Houston, Texas is the best place to garden in the world is because this. We won the World Series this year, guys. Houston. World Champions of Baseball in 2017. So it was a great year, especially given the fact that we got hit with the worst hurricane probably, uh, and flooding from the hurricane, I should say, in the history of the United States. And the great people of Texas and Houston pulled together 
and made this city strong. Um, and just to, you know, most of you know, we got 51 inches of rain in three days. And uh, the city pulled together and did an amazing job. So uh, another great reason to live in Houston, Texas. But as far as gardening goes, I'm going to show you three things I'm growing right now. And if you live in the south, like Houston, Texas, or Orlando, Florida, or Mississippi, you should be growing. Again, start your seeds in August. You'll enjoy your harvest all year long in fall. So let me show you what I still have growing in mid-November in Houston, Texas. All right, well, you've seen this before. I know, I know, I know. But let me show you. So I'm not going to run out of cherry tomatoes anytime soon. Let me give you a close-up of just what's growing here, okay? I mean, look, as far as the eye can see, uh, we have tomatoes. I mean, I just have hundreds, literally hundreds, at different stages, different varieties, whatever it may be. And I'll just circle around here to show you over, under, whatever the case may be. Um, I have no need for cherry tomatoes, okay? And as you know, I'm growing it in my green stalk garden. Look, even the birds love the tomatoes, okay? So some for them, some for me. Look at that. It was either a bird or a squirrel. They really enjoy it too. That's all right. They can have some as long as I have more. So again, just as, look how beautiful that is. As far as the eyes can see, under my fake snake, beautiful, okay? So I do have uh, no need or want for tomatoes, and I'll have them through December. So let's go under here real quick. I'm even growing tomatoes in a, in a uh, uh, pot, a container. Look, there's underneath there, tomatoes. They just don't stop growing. So another thing which is really good, you know, typically spring, fall, summer crop, down here is green beans. And uh, I'll show you, just look at those green beans, man, beautiful. Uh, my wife's a great cook, and um, she does a wonderful job of cooking. But, um, I mean, look at that, just fresh green beans. Again, if you've never had fresh green beans, you'll never go to the store again. Now, what I do is I let some of my green beans go yellow, because, as you know, once they get yellow, you pick them, and then you can use the seeds to plant in the new year. And going yellow just means they're overripe, okay? No big deal. But look at the size of these, man. Some of these are just beautiful. Man, and these are Kentucky pole beans uh, that just grow wonderfully in the fall. So, uh, as you've seen before, what I've done is I've kind of, my beans are kind of growing with the cucumbers in harmony, okay? So, um, you'll see from this cucumber plant, and I still have tons of cucumbers coming out here. And this is kind of cool. Um, you know, we do have a lot of bees here. So let's watch this bee. Hopefully he'll land on the flower and pollinate. But there's another cucumber right there, okay? So this plant, as I talked about before, uh, I'm probably going to get 50 to 70 um, pickling cucumbers on it. And I'm going to have a blast, okay? So um, let's just take a look at this bee. Here he is right here. Where is she? Oh, he didn't want to land for us. But uh, I, heard, I heard from a lot of you, you had said that you don't have uh, many bees in your area. That's too bad. Um, and that's certainly a problem mainly caused by man. But as you can see here, it's kind of cool. I've grown, I've intermingled my beans with my um, cucumber plant and see how it's going. So the last video I talked about, and I'm just gonna show you real quick, this is kind of cool. So again, we talked about the different variety of cucumbers. So if you're on my channel and you're watching this, go back to the last video and find out the three different varieties of pollinated cucumbers, okay? There's actually a bee right there. Let's see if we can grab them, see? This is how bees do their work, okay? They just go from flower to flower to flower. I don't ever have to, I never have to hand pollinate down here. They just do all the work. There's another one. There's about three bees that are swarming around here. So this, this, this um, cucumber plant has a eight, 10 to one, eight to one female flowers to male flowers. So I do intermingle this with the others. And as you can see here, I'll try to give you a close up and not disturb the bees. I just have a ton of baby cucumbers they're going to be growing here and coming on board. So, again, the point of this video is, if you live in the South, you need to garden. All of these that you see here, all of these plants were started from seed. I try not to buy any of my plants from seedling from the store. The main reason is because uh, you grow what they want to sell you, not what you want. And the varieties they have aren't the tastiest, in my opinion, aren't the best. Get some variety, okay? And then once you have it, you can save the seeds for future generation of plants, which become stronger and more adapted to your area. But as you'll see here, uh, in the mid-November, and I have a ton of this stuff. Again, I started my seeds back in August, and now I have 
uh, more cucumbers, more beans, and more uh, uh, tomatoes than I can ever imagine. And the other thing great is my friends love us too. We give them all fresh produce. This again will last until probably mid-December, maybe January 1st until we get our first frost and then we'll clear out from then and start growing spinach lettuce uh, and other winter type vegetables. So this is the reason why Houston, Texas is the best place to garden this time of year. The special caveat this time of year, fall. If you're not planting a garden and you live in Texas or Orlando or South Florida or anywhere in the South, you're making a mistake. You're missing the best time of the year to grow cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, beans, and other things that traditionally like a little bit warmer weather. We can do it here because we live in the South. As far as I'm concerned in Houston, do not waste your time starting to plant things in July or June in Houston, Texas. Won't happen, won't take, worst time of the year, too much rain, too much humidity, it'll be frustrating for you. Fall's the time. The, uh, so anyway, for everybody else watching this video, it is going to be Thanksgiving week. I wish everybody a happy, safe holiday season for the folks that celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States, around the world. For everybody else, make it a great one. We'll talk to you next time. Jeff, your executive gardener, take care.